Hi, everybody. It's me, Jessica Lahore, and we're back with another Jess Talk. Today, we're talking all about drag, family, hierarchy, children, and more. But before we get into the Jess Talk for today, make sure that you've, as always, subscribed to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, and you're not missing out on any of the streaming opportunities for this podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, and more. So, drag families, the hierarchy, let's get into it. Attention the whore, attention the whore, attention the whore, attention, attention. Here I am walking down the street, seeing all the boys trying to take a peek. Shorts pulled up, a chest upright. Come on, boys, just take a bite. Look, but don't touch, spin it round and round. Okay, let's talk about it. Drag families, hierarchy, the family name, names passed down, how do you get put into a family, how are people associated. Let me just break down for those of you that are unsure of what drag family means or like having a drag name or something like that. It can mean a couple of different things. Um, Think about it as your closest drag entertainer friends and you just have a different kind of bond, relationship, connection, connection. than, than like with other regular entertainers. Um, the idea of a drag family is that you're a community and I mean, it passes down from the ball scene of you know having a Vogue mother and so they would take care of, at least this is my understanding, that they would take care of like the entire house and that's kind of moved on into drag families, which is kind of the same idea in some ways. It can be a mentor, it can be somebody that it just makes you feel good to be around, somebody that shares the same views and maybe aesthetic drag wise as you do. Sometimes like you're part of a family without officially being part of a family. Um, And let's talk about all of that. So uh, some of the positions that you can have, you can have a drag mom. I am your mother. You can have a drag dad. You can have a, I think like there is a gender neutral, like the mix the, the mixed parent, the MX parent, like the, the non-binary, like I'm just a guardian or parent of the house. I'm sure that exists. It's giving he, she, we, they, them, non-binary, vegan, vegetarian. Um, um, it can be a drag niece, a nephew, anything gender neutral as well, a son, a daughter, a they, them, anything that you want to be. So it's like normal families and how they would work, but uh, you're connected a little bit differently. So let's talk about my drag family path and discovery. Uh, I'm alone. Loner, okay. Okay, we always joke that like, our drag mom is um, YouTube. It taught me everything I know. It's just kind of a funny thing to say, but I've actually been honored to be around so many different entertainers that I I watch and I take notes and I'm not afraid to ask questions and I try different things. Um, And so I'm a loner as a drag baby, but at one point, Jessica did have a drag mom for three weeks-ish. Her name was Jamie Von D. She was a big Texas pageant queen, could sew, could build hair in front of you, beautiful snatched makeup. And uh, when I was a baby, baby, baby entertainer, she was like, I want you to be my drag kid. She took off her earrings. She gave me her earrings right off of her ears and was like, great. I'm like so excited. I'm being taken in to a family. Um, And I did that for about three weeks, I want to say. We didn't have the best bond or relationship. And I think the biggest thing is that I kept getting called Jessica Vondela Whore. Jessica Vondela Whore. Not Jessica Von D., Lahore for taking the family name, Jessica Vonda Lahore. So I couldn't do that anymore. Um, long story short, we split paths. I've been on my own since as Jessica Lahore, the Lahore Empire. Now, I have had the privilege of having technically five kids, okay? Um, and for my family, the way that I approach approach getting a drag child is uh, how are we connected? Like I said, that that energy connection, that stylistic connection is really important to me, that you're serious but also passionate about your craft and your art in some way that you have a drive to do it in whatever meaning that is for you. Um, and so, but I was never a parent that required my kids to take the last name. Some families, you have to win a pageant, uh, you can't, you have to get rid of your last name, you keep it. Okay, like, you must be Lahore. Whatever your name is, you have to be a Lahore. Um, And that's just never been my style. It's always been on the table. And my first two kids, Lola Gag and Trey Suits, um, who are no longer part of my immediate drag family, they did not take the name. So I had them for a while uh, as part of my family. Things didn't work out. We split part. We separated um, from the family. And I have Sasselina Bluechild, who's a younger entertainer. I believe that she's like 14 now, but uh, she's been 
been in the family for a while, but she's underage, so she's just part of the Miss Jessica family. She's not allowed to have the last name yet um, or even be offered it. Uh, and then I have Talia Tucker Lahore, who took the name, and Foxy Lahore, um, who are my, my drag babies right now, and they become some of my best friends. And so being a drag mom for me is like, how do I mentor while also giving like tough love, while also being constructive, uh, being there to take on emotional energy when things are rough, answer questions, kind of be a guiding force. Um, my style of mothering as a drag parent is very hands-on, but extremely hands-off. Um, I will always be there to offer advice. I understand that you're growing and you're trying new things, and I will always be there to push you to think in a different constructive way. Um, but I will never tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Uh, this is how it works. This is the only way you can do your drag. I want you to be as expressive and as authentically you while building your own name, your own brand, your own identity, and then allowing me to come in and help tweak and answer some of the questions to make it even more refined and more co coherent as a brand. Um, I have two very talented, three, but uh, two actively talented drag artists that really push the boundaries of what a lot of other folks are doing in the drag scene. I know I'm biased to say that, um, but that is, that's part of the reason that they're part of the family is that I'm very similar. And so we connect on that. We hang out regularly. We uh, have personal conversations, business conversations, drag, life conversations. It's, it's more than just a, a friend. They're like, they're like ingrained into my soul. They're, they're my kids, my baby, my, they're my babies, as Linda Belcher would say. Um, there are so many different drag families and drag styles. Um, I know people that are, that have like 32 goddamn drag children and, and, uh, it's more so about having the honor of having the name. Um, like Nina Monteldo has so many, but she's been doing it for 50 years. She's the grand dame of Denver. Like, of course, she's going to have a lot of goddamn kids and grandkids and grandbabies. She's old as shit. Um, and she's earned it. She's earned that, like, reputable last name title to give to the family. Um, you have a really, really great families like uh, the Misdemeanor crew here in Denver who literally are very specifically just locked together in such a, a unique way. They have so many different styles, so many different aesthetics, but they throw down. They're just, they're going to show up, always show up and show out. Uh, you have the Stax Navy, the, the wild as ever, but they are ride or dies for each other. You fuck with one, you fuck with the rest of them. They are such a strong, united front of a house. They have like eight or nine kids of some kind. Like there's a lot of them in the Stax Navy. They're really, really awesome. Um, you have the Sexton Mafia um, here in Denver as well very large, very extended, broad family as well um, that has years of history. One of the first larger names in Denver was the Sexton you know, Mafia. You had Kira Sexton, you have um, uh, Manny now, you have so many people that have uh, carried down the name. So you always have like a matriarch or somebody that's like head of the household, head of the empire, that would be me for the House of Lahore. Um, and then it carries down. And if you've been a house for 20 to 30 years, that's history. Just pass down matriarch to matriarch to, to next person like in line to take care of and manage the house and, and the name. Um, I think that to, a lot of people get focused on like having to have a drag mom and having to have a drag house. And I don't think that's the right way to go about it. I remember going through a period where all I wanted to do was be a sexton. I wanted to be Victoria Sexton's daughter so bad. Um, everything about her, I was obsessed. I, I just wanted to get closer and learn from her and, and feel like she was a drag mom. She was not going to have any kids whatsoever. Um, there was a time where I really wanted to be a be fierce because Janessa is just one of those icons for me. And these are all entertainers in Denver, Colorado. There's a time where I wanted to be, I mean, there's still a time I would love to be a misdemeanor in some aspect, but I know that comes with adding it to the last name. And um, me and Felony are so much like sisters. I don't know what that would look like. Um, I really would love to be a Montaldo because there's something about having a legendary name attached for working really hard and, and being an icon of that caliber. You can't, you can't compete with anything like that. There is a moment where I wanted to be a Flowers, Nina Flowers kid, because I'm obsessed with her style, her confidence, her makeup, her passion, and I resonate a lot with the way that she holds herself, um, and I learn from the way that she holds herself. Um, 
there was one time I wanted to be, a, you know, I consider myself a sex and all these names in some way I consider myself associated like an auntie to the family. Like I'm a sister, an auntie, I'm a cousin, I'm a Kimmy Gibbler. Like I'm really there, but I'm not actually there. I just barge into your house and I get to sneak up and say, Hey, I'm going to be a, a misdemeanor for the day, or I'm going to be a stacks for the day. Um, and they don't, and it's just funny. It's, it's like a respect thing. It's because they know I'm kidding, but I respect the family so much that I can, I could do something like that. Um, but I, I am, but just kind of by, my, by myself. I have like my glitter drag family. It's my Fort Collins family. Been performing with them for 10 years. I have my sisters and sisters is like a really important term that I like to give out. Everyone throws it around sometimes. Oh, sister this, sister that. Hi, sister. Ah! I really like to say sister or sister friend. Uh, I use sister friend or brother friend, which sounds weirder, but I still use it to identify my closest inner circle. So Lala Queen, Holden a Queen, Lulu Crystals, Dixie Crystals, Zara, uh, I, the Mariah. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. When I use these names, it's because I have history, longevity, a rapport with these folks. There's mutual respect, um, and it just feels good. Okay, uh, and then I, I'm an auntie to a lot of people. It's people that uh, my friends or my drag judies have kids. Uh, so like Ivy Powers and Raquel, um, finish him all night. Um, Misfortune, Pop Tart. These are all people that I would say like these are like my like I look out for them. Like I'm a I'm a bad aunt. I'm the smoking drinking aunt in the corner. Like you're doing great, sweetie. But as soon as somebody comes from like all right, let's put the cigarette out. Who do I gotta fuck up today? You know, um, I'm a, I feel like I'm a decent mom, a decent aunt, uh, and I'm I'm there as often as I'm needed. I try my best to show up even for a little bit, um, but I could always improve. Everyone can always improve. I also have a lot of drag ants, so it's really weird to be 10 years in the business now and to feel the opposite of when I was starting out. And when I was starting out, I had aunties like Harley Quinn um, and Nicole Summers and Brittany Michaels, who still is, and Jasmine James at the time. And I would consider these kind of elders in the drag community in a very respectful way, the people that I looked up to for advice. Like they always called me a niece. Um, Vivian Lachere is another one. They would always call me a niece. They would look out for me, give me advice. Um, I could lean on them. We They gave me a lot of great opportunities. Um, and they're just people that are really important to the scene. Like I, I started because those are my aunties. Now I'm an auntie to so many other people and it's such a weird flip flop. Um, but yeah, I consider myself to be part of a lot of families, the Hispanic family, every, every family I consider myself to be part of in some way, even if they don't claim me motherfucker. Um, uh, do I think that it, you need to have a drag family? No. Do I think that you can have your chosen drag family? Absolutely. Do I think that drag families are tied to success? No, but they can be a great stepping stone for opportunities. Uh, if you are a part of a drag family and you're well-connected, that's almost a referral. Having that on the last name does help. People see Lahore on an on a email or like I'm trying to book this person and they see Lahore, they know it's going to be a great show and they're going to trust it. That's just it, period. They see misdemeanor to book this entertainer or on the flyer, they're going to show up. And so I would say it's not 100% guaranteed, but you're offered a lot of opportunities for being part of certain houses, just as much as if you have a house name and the house has a reputation of being shitty. They're thieves or they lies or they just talk shit all the time or they're uh, always going to shows and being rude or they're nasty to the bar staff. If you're a part of that family, then that is a red flag for a lot of people, show producers, people in the community and more. Um, knowing who you're associating, but you're also a representation of your family. If I get a call from a bar manager and they say, Hey, um, I just want to let you know your daughter, Talia Tucker Lahore decided to take a shit on the stage, smear it all around and finger paint with it and then start voguing. It's completely unacceptable. She threw it at the bartenders. I would say, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's a reflection of me. That's my kid acting a fucking fool. And it comes with consequences, just like if you're parenting a kid. You have, you have to make sure that you're not controlling your children or your family, but they're also holding you accountable. I'm representing this name just as much as they are, and if I'm act a fucking mess, they should be calling me out too. Um, that's, it's, it's very important to think of it that way. Just as much as standing up for something that's right, uh, making sure that you're, if you see something, you say something. That all is a representation of you in general, but part of your house name. Um, what made me want to become a mother there? I've asked 
quite a few people that have declined because having my name is very controversial in Denver. Um, it's great within the business world and when it is attached to the community world, my drag kids have lost friends. They have lost, uh, connections with people in the drag community because they're associated with me. And so, uh, that, that's one of my biggest fears of becoming a mother was that I wanted to have kids, but nobody wanted to have the name and I don't blame them, but also they're going to, they're kind of a target in a lot of ways. Like, and it's unfortunate, and it has happened multiple times to each of my kids in some way. Um, but when it just fits and it works and you're just – something in your soul tells you this person would be an amazing addition to them, to your family, because they are – for me, they're independent. They're creative. They're cre- – uh, they're uh, bulldozing their own lane and their own opportunity. They're uh, – a positive influence in the community. They're a hard worker. Um, they're not afraid to be vulnerable. They offer a skill set that is challenging and different than yours. And so it allows you to grow as a person as well while also learning how to take on and 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 learn from each other. Like I've learned a lot of different ideas of patience and interacting with people and checking myself um, that from my drag kids because they're so self-aware in that, in that sense. Um, And so when it feels right, it just feels right. And it does hurt when you're rejected. I've asked probably four or five other people to be my drag kids, and they have declined. And we're still friends, but in the back of my head, I'm like, ah, you just, it would be so awesome. Um, But you can't, you have to, we have to respect everyone's decisions and where they want to go and uh, what what their path in their journey is for their business too. Like it doesn't make them less of a sister. doesn't mean that you have to care for them less. It's just cool to have that, that empire title. Like we're small, the the four of us, three, because little Sasselina, but we are powerful and mighty. We really are. Are there rivalry, rivalry? Are there rivalries within drag families? Um, it's I would say it's a yes and you have friendly rivalries. So like you'll do family shows where it's one family versus the other and they get whoever gets the loudest applause wins kind of thing. Um, I think this is another ballroom thing that's passed down. You come as your house to win trophies um, and you would participate in different categories. And so there was rivalry within like friendly rivalry within house names. But I, I have no doubt that there are like it's petty rivalries is what I call them. People will not associate with you or the like the rivalry of success, the jealousy of success is so strong with some families. You're like, well, why does this family get this? Why does this family get to do that? They shouldn't. And it doesn't do anything for them. They just complain. Um, and then I would say that you have rivalries like heat it. Like I hate that. Um, and if you talk to them, you're out of the family, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm sure that exists. Are you friends with her? Let me know now. Are you friends with her? I'm sure that, I'm positive that exists. I know that exists. (laughs) This is Jessica Lahore, and I'm here to tell you, I know it exists. All right. All right, everybody. So that was your episode, your Jess talk for today. We talked all about drag families and more. Comment down below if you have any drag family names that you are in love with and uh yeah we'll see you next time bye attention the whore hi little whores it's me jessica lahore and did you know that i'm on cameo that's right cameo is a platform where you can get personalized messages from me the biggest whore in all of colorado whether it be a birthday sing-along a bar mitzvah a congratulations on your new job congratulations you didn't get pregnant I'm your whore for the message. So follow the link below, click it, and book your next cameo to surprise your best friend, your grandma, your family member, or any other little whore fan out there. Come on, book them now.